Now, if you've been watching any of my videos, you may know that I like traveling around and picking up really odd stuff. And on my recent travels, I managed to pick up a few of these bowls balls. Now, any seller will tell you that these bowls balls are getting really hard to find and their wood are, if they are wood, lignum vitae. Now, lignum is very expensive and it's getting really, really rare. So if you manage to find one, do pick it up. Now also what the seller may tell you is that us wood turners or woodworkers are getting them as quick as they can buy them because they're really good at making mallets. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. This is now the third mallet of this kind I've made. Before I film anything I haven't done before, I like to give it a go. Doing so helps me find out what's good and bad about it. In this case, I turned a previous bowls ball, but made out of resin. The resin, as you would expect, is rock hard, and really did a number of my carbide bits. It went through well enough, and the finished item looked amazing. I have been told by fellow woodworkers that turning the resin balls can be dangerous, and in extreme cases, they can explode. So if you do give it a go, please do be careful. When I picked up these wooden ones, I knew there were going to be mallets. The thought of making bowls out of them and wasting all that expensive rare wood would just make me cringe. This ball had a really interesting marking on the top and bottom. I wanted to try and keep this and incorporate it within the design. I drilled a hole in one end and using an auger bit, I opened it up to around 22mm. I did this in the hope that it would fit over my chuck, but it didn't and when I tried to turn it using a piece of wood turned down to hold it in place, it flew off. This obviously didn't work so I went back, opened up the hole some more and put it back on the chuck, the correct way. I turned down the ball to the shape I liked. It's one I've done before on another mallet and it suits the overall look in my opinion. I have a suspicion these balls have been left outside for much of their later life as drilling into them released water and on some occasions I had what can only be described as fireworks shooting out at me. On inspection it was water but at high speed. I wanted to be careful not to cause any cracks in the wood to open up any further. I found the end grain to be the hardest and I had a catch after catch so I ended up using my triangle carbide bit and that worked a treat and gave a great look and feel to the wood. I work my way through the grits and apply a liberal coat of headstrong abrasive paste. This will take out any of them small scratches and give a surface ready for finish. The head gets moved to one side and I work on the handle. I have had this piece of wood for some time. I am unsure what this actually is, but it has a beautiful grain and knew it had to go on this. I turn down one end as a tenon. 
to fit into the mallet head. I am going for that hidden fixing as I want to make that stamp a focal point. The head wasn't quite flat at this point so I made a quick and dirty piece to hold the mallet in place, similar to what I had before but this time knowing I wouldn't be turning too much wood off and it should be okay. With this set up I can flatten the bottom so it would sit flush with the handle. Once the tenon is turned down to the right size to fit into the head, I start marking out for everything I want to put on the handle. I drew a design I like the look of and drew it on the wall. I found this easier than having a piece of paper that can fly off at any point. Just to point out, I do use my other chisels from time to time and knew that the skew would make light work of what I required.
I wanted to highlight the shadows within the handle, so using a piece of wire I burnt shadow lines. This is a nice touch in my personal opinion and gives the mallet something extra. Once again sanding and headstrong to take off all those mini scratches. Moving over to the bandsaw I created a little jig to help me line up the split top. This obviously works better when the tenon goes through completely on the handle and you want a nice centred split to put in a contrasting wood wedge. It's a great little jig and really helped. Once this was done I started preparing all the pieces for gluing. I placed a generous amount of glue into the head and onto the wedge. I place the wedge into the split tenon and place the head on top. Using the mallet every time you push the handle in, the wedge is pushing the split tenons outwards creating an ever tightening fitting. Once this was in place I could sand off the tip on the end of the handle and finish it as I've done with the rest of the mallet. You can finish your mallet any way you wish, oil being the best choice, for me I used the shellac and didn't feel it worthy of filming as it didn't change much from what you've already seen. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video, it was a great little project for me and the outcome just makes me smile every time I look at it. If you've liked this video don't forget to hit subscribe and also click the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment if you have done something similar down below and if you haven't already do go and check out some of my other videos. Until the next time I'll see you soon.